How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? It's the last weekend of the regular season. Man, a hey, Carly, it flew by. I mean, it really flew by. Dude, it feels like we were just scrounging for preseason stuff. Grinding, grinding out for all every the conference, every team, every newcomer. Maybe what we should do, maybe we might we need to go back and listen to all of those and see which ones we got right, which ones we got wrong. Loki, that would at. be kind of fun. Would be fun. Maybe maybe a couple were like, ah, ah. But maybe uh just a couple, yeah. I want to give a couple shout, a couple shouts just right off the top of my brain before we get into it. One, saw saw on there Shelby Cornell a hundred career wins for Oklahoma City. Saw that on the socials this weekend. Think about that. You think over a four year career that's twenty five. Over a five year career that's twenty. Graduated this week and there there's the proof. Come on. Um, <laughs> but that one and then let's see what else do we have. Uh, a lot, lot of team, lot of teams locked up the the regular season, um, mm -hmm. obviously. But yeah, Carly, for you, no, obviously, uh, the what what you do with your nonprofit. Um, what what's the name of it again? JDRF. JDRF. So no, something that you've been talking about a while for is the Met Gala for that. How's yeah, that going? It's, everything good. Um, <laughs> as good as it can be. It's sure. stressful putting on. Um, what's our highest raising fundraiser, I guess you would call it. Um, we're expecting like 850 people to show up. Nice. So there's a lot of planning, a lot of auction items, a lot of seating. So I'm looking forward to it being over. I bet. Well, it'll get over and then it'll be nothing but postseason softball time. Love then it. I'm hitting uh, the road. Hitting the road. Hitting the <laughs> road. Got some great stuff. We just had our meeting, uh, you, me, car and connor we've had our meeting what the plan is everything folks were fired up but we're, we're gonna have a lot of great content coming out make sure you, you are subscribed to the youtube um at naisb uh naisb underscore on instagram on twitter y'all know the deal go 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 check it out it's good stuff speaking of good stuff carly got a great episode uh for the folks today we're gonna go through the conference scenarios heading into the final weekend uh, a lot of them are set a lot of things are already set in stone know who the six teams or four teams or eight teams that are gonna be in the conference tournament already are uh we also ha have some that are very interesting looking at uh the sun that is coming to one game we'll decide the winner of that one after coastal georgia and st thomas split today we got the cascade we got the crossroads we'll talk about those we'll talk about ones though um that there at the bottom who's trying to be the, the number six seed who's trying to be the number eight seed um again sun conference well that sun card out sun card sun card it's been a lot of fun we're having a lot, lot, lot of fun it's going to be a, a lot of fun down in miami gardens this weekend we'll say that um and then a phenomenal phenomenal interview last interview of the regular season uh episodes and it is a good one carly got coach al mendiola Got Hattie Haruza. Got Annie Polster. Throw them up. Throw up the Yotes. Wait, up. which one is it? this one, right? That? No, it's that one. Yeah, it's that one. That's it. Yeah. Go if you Yotes. tune in, you'll see us do it at the end. So yeah, there we go. There we go. Mm -hmm. we, we, we definitely did it right at the end. But great yeah. stuff there. Um, great interview. So let's get into it. We're gonna be brief and then we'll we're gonna kick it over uh to the interview home real quick though. Carly. Yeah. I know you saw that Billy Big Mouth bass I reeled in. That big old swamp donkey, yeah. Oh my days! Oh my days! <laughs> Dude, well, that uh, thing's massive. I've been bass fishing a while. I've been waiting to catch a trophy bass. Trophy bass, eight pounds or, or bigger. Been waiting to catch one of those for for about fifteen years since I started bass fishing. Incredible, incredible. What what happened? JJ McCarthy to the Vikings. Watching the draft, J.J. McCarthy to the Vikings. Carly, as one of the bigger Green Bay Packer fans that I know, thoughts thoughts on this. Thoughts on this is just happening live. We are recording 922 Eastern Time. Carly, thoughts on J.J. Not McCarthy worried. to the Minnesota Vikings. Not worried. Not worried. What about, what about the Bears? What about the Bears? The Bears, a lot of cap space. They got a lot of cap space, and they got their guy. They got their guy. They got Caleb. And they got Roma Duce, right? They got Rome boys. They got Rome confirmed. Shout out JB. Still not worried. Not <laughs> worried. Jordan Love, the guy. He is the guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, you know a thing or two about getting the quarterbacks right. I have to admit that about the Packers, brother. Never good at that. Sketch. We uh, wish you a very speedy recovery. 
with the with the hammy or ACL. Um, <laughs> oh gosh, tough one, tough one. All right, let's get into it. Let's talk some NIL softball. Let's go through these. We're gonna go in alphabetical order. Uh, we'll start in the AMC. Everything's set. Everything's set. Go the go there. Um, shout out Missouri Baptist. They have locked that one up. A uh, very very close one down the stretch. William Baptist and Central Baptist almost had one of the bigger. Uh, upsets as far as a regular season pick uh, if they could have got that away from Missouri Baptist they were uh, each couple games away from doing so um, so going through it Missouri Baptist the one seed William Baptist and Central Baptist follow Cotty versus Columbia will be the four five William Woods is the six Stevens is the seven and UHSP the eight seed um, in the in the AMC moving on Reinhardt uh, believe Johnson beat Brian last I saw. I know they beat him the first game, second game. I believe it was like four nothing or three nothing, two nothing, something like that late. Um, but I don't think it matters either way. Pretty sure everything's set up there. Reinhardt has won that one. Uh, congrats to them. No, uh, uh, it'll be very interesting rest of their season. We'll leave it at that, uh, for Reinhardt. Um, Johnson, shout out Johnson. What a year. What a year. Second in that conference at 21 and six. Tennessee Wesleyan follows them at three. Drew McConnell at four. Brenow at five. And then Columbia, Bryan, and Pikeville. Um, don't think anything can change there with the Union, Pikeville, and Bryan. Pretty sure. Don't think they play any more games when I check, but that's they all sit there at 13 and 15, and it's Bryan and Pikeville in, according to the AAC website, as we're recording this. Um, checking over to the cow, the cow pack. <laughs> Sorry, my dad, my dad's a Falcons fan and he just texted me and he said, Falcons went stupid again. I don't think he's too happy with the, uh, <laughs> Michael Penix decision. I don't, I don't, I don't get that either. Like you just got Kurt. Just signed Kurt. Yeah. But make Packers route, Packers route. Maybe the Falcons trying to be the Packers. Good luck. Maybe. Let them sit behind Kirk, but you're not worried. Not worried. Now we're, now we're youngest team. Youngest team, brother. Youth. Um, Cal Pack. Embry Riddle wrapped that one up uh, a couple episodes ago. Westcliff follows them. Imagine those two are going to be going at it again. But Park Gil Gilbert, Simpson, uh, Ben Mesa, something to say about it too, for sure. Interesting one here. One uh, th This is probably the most must-watch softball heading into the final weekend. We head up to the Pacific Northwest for the Cascade. Call that bench playing. You 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 want you you want to roll with this one? Or you want me to get it? Um, you're going up there, why don't you? All right, all right, let me get it. Um, so here's how it sits right now. There uh six teams are in Eastern Oregon, Oregon Tech, College of Idaho, Southern Oregon, British Columbia, Carroll. Six teams are in. Congratulations, y'all are in. Y'all have made it to one of the hardest conversation minutes to probably make it in. Um Eastern Oregon and Oregon Tech are tied at 21 and 3. Eastern Oregon won the series because uh, they play four game sets, but only the first three of those count towards conference play. Eastern Oregon took two, the, two of those three. They sit on top of the conference. Game back, College of Idaho at 19-4. and A couple games back there is then Southern Oregon. Don't think so. there's a path for Southern Oregon to get in, um, even if they take all three from Eastern Oregon. I guess uh, – yeah, okay, all right. I think the only way – yeah, no, because – College of Idaho and Oregon Tech won both of those series. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so, all right. Yeah. So, for Eastern Oregon, pretty simple. If they uh, they go and they, they, if they can sweep Southern Oregon, they win the first three games, they got it. If they take two or three, if they take two or three, they would need College of Idaho to at least take a game. Eastern Oregon would. Oregon Tech needs to sweep College of Idaho – and Eastern Oregon to lose a game to Southern Oregon. That's how Tech jumps. And then for College of Idaho, I believe they would need to sweep Oregon Tech, and then Southern Oregon would need to take two or three from Eastern Oregon. Confusing stuff. Basically, Eastern Oregon's in. Pieces. Yeah, or Eastern Oregon's in the driver's seat. If they slip up, that Oregon Tech's got the next best chance. Uh, if they can, if they can do better than them, because they're both twenty-one and three. Uh, College of Idaho, they need uh, they need help with Southern Oregon, um, and 
Well, I mean, Oregon Tech does too, but still. Um, those are the scenarios. Eastern Oregon looks like odds on favorite, but they got to go senior weekend. Southern Oregon, Raiders are pissed off. They just lost uh, three or four three or four to College of Idaho. They're going to want to get get going here. So, we'll see. Ooh, Chicago, really? do what? All right, yeah. Uh, you go ahead now. You, you want to uh, roll with a couple? Yeah, moving to the CCAT. <laughs> yeah, the Chicago oh. Land Brothers. St. Francis pretty much takes it all. They're 12 and four on the year or yeah. In conference, um, not far behind them. St. Xavier, 10 and four Roosevelt, nine and five. Um, Trinity Christian, the trolls, eight and six. Um, is yours cut off? No, nah, it's just the way it's probably because I screenshot them on my phone. That's why I've been on my my bad. I should have told you to uh, go on your phone. Like when I tried to pull up on my lap, the dock on my laptop, it was messing up. Um, to be yeah, a St. Ambrose uh, follows them as the five seed, and then um, Olivia and Naz will be the six seed. So St. Francis, St. Xavier, Roosevelt, Trinity Christian, St. Ambrose, uh, Olivia and Naz. Period. Okay, this looks so. way better on my phone. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Pull, yeah just, just roll on the phone. The phone's a lot easier. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. So that one cut and dry, good to go. Uh, you want to roll on the crossroads? Yeah. Um, Marion is sitting at the top at 39 and nine. Indiana Wesleyan's right behind them at 36 and 10. Marion is two and two versus Iwo. Iwo has two more this Saturday afternoon versus Huntington. Um, we'll have to see how that plays out. Fifth yeah. and sixth teams Iwo... are determined. What's that? I was just thinking, I don't know. I mean, it's pretty simple there for the top. If I woo, or I'm sorry, if, if, yeah, if I woo drops one to Huntington, then Marion gets it because yes. they're, they both have 27 wins, but, um, I woo, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I woo needs yeah, to sweep. Would, yeah. Okay. So yeah. it just depends what, ha what happens in, in that I woo, uh, Huntington game. And then, as you were saying, five e the five seed plays the eight seed, six plays seven, one and two get first round by. Yes. Okay. Yeah. A little bit different. A little bit different there. So Marion, Iwu, Spring Arbor, Mount Vern. Uh and I think everything's locked up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, no, Grace and Saint yeah. Francis down there at the bottom and we don't have that in the note pull up uh saint francis indiana's schedule real quick all right so grace has got two against mount vernon as obviously mount vernon's in they're good uh grace has got 12 wins saint francis 13 so if grace you said they're tied right grace and saint francis they've gone two and two mm -hmm. in conference all right mm -hmm. and I, again i'm not really sure what the tiebreakers past that are in conference but so both at the bottom of that conference and at the top we're looking at a possibility of having to go to a, a second tiebreaker uh, or third tiebreaker i'm sorry so we'll see but big ones for grace against mount vernon st francis done no more games on their schedule no mas okay. um okay i believe everybody else could go g sack is wrapped up uh jessup will play ottawa of arizona vanguard will play hope international Oh, UAZ got Jessup earlier. That is true. I don't know if they'll be able, be able to do it in, in, in the tournament. They get, they, did they get them once or twice? Uh, at least once, maybe twice. I know they got them once. For, it, for sure once. Yeah, for sure once. Um, GPAC, your conference. Carly, what we got? We got some more okay. craziness. Yeah. Um, Midland leads the way right now. They're 18-2. and two. Right behind them is Northwestern at 17-3. and three. They play each other Saturday. Um, and then there's four teams locked at 12 and 8. We got Jamestown, Dort, Concordia, and Morningside. Um, they also play each other this weekend. Jamestown takes on Morningside and Concordia takes on Dort. So it's gonna be very interesting to see um kind of how things wind up for a conference tournament, who goes to what side. It's a little different than GPAC, right? Like how it split up the all it, yeah. Yeah, so it's yeah, one and that? two. One and two are host seeds. Okay. Um, so one has eight, and then, um, gosh darn it, I was just telling you about it. Yeah. 
So one and two host, and then it's like two gets seven, and then like three and three and six, four and five kind of deal. Four and, and five, I think, and then one gets eight, three and six, I think. Something like that. Something like that. Okay. And then um the two that win their side, the the whoever's uh lower seated mm. gets their home site. So like last year, Northwestern was one, so they got to host. Okay. The championship. Gotcha. And so right now, uh, Midland's got a one game lead at the top. They do. So I believe Northwestern has to beat them twice, but yeah, they need to beat them twice. I think if they split, they just look at who lost to who. Yeah, and then I guess so I guess strength of schedule in conference. I I, I don't know what the tiebreakers for all the conferences are, so that's where things get everyone's, a little hairy. Yeah, everyone's different. Okay. Um, well, speaking of everybody being different, um, what what do you like better? Do you like the way the GPAC does it, or like the way like the Sun Conference has a neutral site, or like how the Cascade does? the regular season champ or like crossroads at an even rotation, which one of those for say those four scenarios, what, what, what do you prefer? I got an easy first I got, one out. I don't um, like the way the G pack does it. That's too confusing. Really? Yeah, that's too much. Too I, 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 I like, I'm, I, I'll do I go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I might like it cause I'm used to it, but like, sure. I think the way I think about it is cause we have the regular season champ as well. So if you're number two, I mean, you get to start off with a little bit of, home field advantage on your half sure kind of because i mean if if regular season champ makes it to the championship whoever else is in it gets their bid too oh that's sick okay so yeah. that's great because like theoretically you could have like an eight seed mess yes. around so like yeah. last year when we played morning side and or not morning side northwestern in the championship we automatically had a bid because northwestern had already gotten theirs right okay Okay. But I do like the neutral site. I think that's a really good yeah. way to go about it. I mean, I think it depends. Like, I mean, with the sun having it there at Clearwater, I mean, that rocks. I mean, that that's a great yeah. facility. I mean, you got to make sure it's a good facility, obviously. But I don't know. I don't know how, like, the Cascade. That's awesome. Like, how it's coming down to this. Yeah. It's awesome. It's thrilling. I mean. It makes the race more exciting. And hold on. We got a big, we got a big one. What happened, boys? Brock Bowers to the Raiders. One pick away from the Saints. I'm. <laughs> I might. I, I don't. I don't. I don't even care. I don't, go Braves. Go Dogs. There's no Saints stuff up behind here. Who Bowers? Bowers. Bowers piss. I don't. I don't think Bowers is a Vegas guy. I don't see. He 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 would be a great New Orleans guy. Yeah. He's from Cali. He's from Cali, so he's going back home. He's going yeah. close to home. True. All right. Um, let's see. Heart. Heart. The heart. All right. So William Penn swept Clark today. So massive for them. So let's go through this. CMU, congratulations, conference champ. Never a doubt. Um, see if they can go undefeated. If they play Benedictine, a lot of weather in the Midwest. A lot of weather could be messing some stuff up. Um, yeah. It, this over the next tomorrow and Saturdays. Friday and Saturday are supposed to be. Huh. We're right in the thick of it. I'm gonna wanna pull up a picture real quick. I'm gonna pull up my weather app. Check this out. It's just all sunny. It's sunny and everything's between sixty and ninety degrees for Hang the on. next ten days. Let me let me show you this little radar of where Omaha sits tomorrow. I need to hang on. Oh I need my. to open the camera to make sure. The oh red. Days. Oh my days. We're like a jawbreaker. We're going to get smacked. Speaking uh, of smacked. And my house looks like it could get blown over by the big bad wolf. So. Ooh. <laughs> no bueno. Straw? Is it straw? Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it's falling apart. This was the Swamp Donkey, by the way. Everybody go to YouTube. That's the Swamp Donkey in question Dude, from earlier. I cannot believe that hog. Unreal feeling. Unreal. You put him back in there? 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we put her back. We put her back. We put her back. We put her back. Uh, she was. She made look like she hadn't spawned yet, which is surprising. I usually spawned out by now. But anyways, Heart of America softball. Um, Benedictine. See what happens there with them. They uh, currently so they look pretty good at getting the two seed. Um, see if they play CMU. What happens? Baker's right behind them at the three. Baker, tip of the cap. Way to turn it around. Um, look, it's looking shaky there. Um, then getting the conference tournament makes something shake. Uh, Grandview of four. Underrated big game. I want to talk about this again in the sun. Underrated big game when it could come to opening round. Grandview's got two against Mount Mercy. That, those could get them to wins 30 and 31 on the year. That's big. That could yeah. be some big wins. Pick up a couple more in the conference tournament. That could be big. I'm going to talk about uh, uh, some games. like there's, there's some other ones, but that those kind of stood out to me for those reasons. Um, Mid-Am now sits there at 5, at 14 and 10 in conference. Mount Mercy at 6, at 11 and 9. Missouri Valley at 11 and 11, at 7. No. Yeah, at seven and Graceland at eight is nine and eleven. Park is eight and fourteen. Clark is seven and fourteen. No, I'm sorry. Clark is now seven and fifteen. Uh William Penn is now eight and fifth eight and fourteen after today. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so Mo Valley and Graceland currently in Park and William Penn sitting just outside. William Penn plays. Two against Peru State on Saturday. Clark plays a couple against Culver Stockton. Uh, Park will play. Park versus Peru St uh, State is postponed. Obviously, those are games that a uh, pretty good chance those will have to be played. Um, and then Graceland plays Mo Valley on Monday. So a lot of key games in the heart. Uh, th those are some likely going to have to get pushed because of weather. Um, but yeah. Uh, KCAC pretty much, uh, done there. Evangels, they're going to be the one seed. Bethany sits there at 11 and 13. They split with Tabor, who is 13 and 13. Kansas Wesleyan right there at 13 and 13 too. But Bethany's got two against Ottawa. They got to be Ottawa twice. Do you see Bethany going to be beating Ottawa twice? And uh, assuming Ottawa play, plays all their players and they're not resting anybody for the conference tournament because they are locked into that, uh, Pretty sure they're locked in. They're 19 and 5. Friends is 19 and 7. I'm not sure what the tiebreakers are there. And I don't know if I I'm not sure. But yeah. Um, Ottawa's two, Friends three, St. Mary. By the way, hey, friends. You remember Friends at the beginning of the year? How I was at with them at the beginning of the year? Yeah. Could they be? Could they do something here in the postseason, Carly? Could the Friends Falcons shock uh, the world? Yeah, a little bit of a sleeper activity. I'm not going to put my bad juju on them, but right behind them is St. Mary and then Avila um, and then Oak Woo. Look at there. Look at Avila. Look at Avila sitting in the five seed. We've seen this story before. We've seen this one before. Uh, Mid-South, got it coming down to Georgetown and Bethel. Cumberland's has wrapped it up. They're followed by Campbellsville, Freed Hardman, Cumberland, Lindsey Wilson, and then Georgetown and Bethel. Bethel's got to sweep them. Uh, pretty simple there. Um, same thing in the North Star, right, Carly? With with uh, Walford and Viterbo, kind of same deal. Yeah, Waldorf. 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 Uh, hold on one second. Red second. River. Yeah, <laughs> Red River. I think Olu's got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got it. Um, everything's finalized in that in that conference. Um, LSUA, Houston Victoria, Louisiana Christian, Tex Tex M Tex Arcana, Tex AM San Antonio at six. Um, and then they're resting right there at seven and eight, or Texas College and Xavier. Um, that one's wrapped up. River States. Uh so they're east and west, so a little bit uh a little bit more confusing there, but Three teams from each, three from the east, three from the west. Um, in the east, uh, Shawnee State sits there at 21 and 7. They got that wrapped up. Uh, Rao Grants at 18 and 10. They're in. Uh, big wins today for Ohio Christian. They took two of four to now have a half game lead on Park. They play them two more times on Saturday. 
Um, so I guess Ohio Christian needs one. I don't guess I know. Um, Ohio Christian needs one. P points got to take two. Pretty simple there. Uh, over on the West, IU Southeast uh, sits there at 26 and four. St. Mary the Wood is 24 and eight. Uh, and then for that th that third and final spot out of the River State to West, Oakland City is 17 and 13. Midway is 15 and 15. Midway plays two against IU Southeast Saturday. Uh, Oakland City has, uh, yeah, IUPC uh, on Saturday as well. They play two. Uh, if it comes down to a tie, Oakland City took three or four against Midway. Um, the Sooner, Carly, pretty simple. Pretty simple. Oklahoma City sits at the top. Um, 35 and one USAO, they got two, two locked up 27. Basically the top three are locked up. Well, majority are locked up mid America Christian at three, um, Southwest Christian, Wayland Baptist, Texas Westland, central Christian needs one versus Matthew. That would. I mean, that, that would lock them in. That would lock them in. That locks uh, them in. If they get swept, then there'd be some tiebreaker stuff with them and Sagu, uh, who's eight and twenty-eight. But they got those four against Mac U. They just need one. I think. Yeah, so that's that's really the only movement we would see. Yep, that's it out of the sooner. Um Southern States, pretty simple. Pretty simple, but then again, right there at the bottom, because everybody else is done. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I know right there at the top. William Carey, one. Mill, Georgia State, two. Mobile, Stillman, Faulkner, Bruton Parker. And then for um, the seven spots. I'm pretty sure it's seven teams that, that, that make the Southern State. Yeah, seven teams. If it's six teams, then excuse this last part. But pretty sure it's seven teams. And Tennessee Southern, who's playing hot. Boy, they yeah. – we're going to do so – obviously, next ep episode is going to be who we get in. The the Saints just drafted so, some guy from – an old lineman from Oregon State. An old lineman from Oregon State is going to the state, Saints. I'm, I'm about to just be a Falcons fan. I'm, I'm – you know, I'm over this. I'm over this crap. I'm so – I'm so over – I'm so over this. I'm, I'm about to just be an XFL fan. I'm done with this crap. <laughs> Um, but Thomas plays point. Um, they if they take two, they they would now they would then be nine and fifteen tied with Tennessee Southern. Um, but Tennessee Southern beat Thomas and DH, so it doesn't matter anyways. So they're sitting there at that seven spot. Pretty sure seven teams. No, there's seven last year. Um, if it's six, then Bruton Parker's that cut off. Um, if they've changed that, uh, but don't think so. Don't think they changed that. Uh, Sun Conference. Uh, Coastal and St. Thomas split today, so they play tomorrow. Winner take all in the Sun. A lot of fun there. That's fun. That's fun. Uh, down at the bottom, very fun. Florida. So here we got Florida Memorial, Weber, and Ave. Shout out Warner. Warner took two or three from Ave Maria, uh, to lock up that five seed for the six seed. Plomo can take two or three or all three from Weber, and they'll pass Ave Maria. Weber needs to sweep Flomo, and Weber will pass Ave Maria. And Ave Maria just needs Weber to take two. Three scenarios, that's how it's cut out. Um, Man. Yep. And then, Carly, the whack. Eight Lock. teams, eight teams locked and loaded. Yeah. Madonna, perfect, perfect season, 20 and 0 in conference. Imagine Hard that. to do. Hard to do. Um, right behind them, Concordia, they're 15 and 5. Northwestern Ohio, 16 and 6. Aquinas, 15 and 7. They're in that four. Indiana Tech, 14 and eight. They're in that five. Lawrence Tech, um, 13 and nine. That was six. <laughs> Cornerstone, 11 and 11. And Cleary, eight and 14. Yep, that's it. All right. We'll do it. Good so job. that's it. Those are scenarios. That's how it's going down. Um, final games, final regular season games. Next week, we'll have one episode, only one episode next week. We'll preview all the conference tournaments. Um, probably have Carp on. I have Mimi on as well. Uh, we're going to go in, talk about all the opening matchups in, in the opening and in, in the conference tournaments. 
We'll give our predictions, who we think will win every conference tournament. And, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Carly, anything else? Uh, any hot takes? Any hot takes? i tell you what. I think the most interesting uh, couple of ones that where there's no tiebreak, cut and dry, Sun Conference, Cascade, who wins those two regular seasons? Yeah. Uh, you want me to make a guess? Make a guess. So we got all that, that the, uh, the Eastern uh, Oregon versus, uh, yeah, or those. No. Um, Eastern Oregon plays Southern, and then Idaho plays has to be Tech. Eastern Oregon has to win three. No, it's. Right? Because if they take two and someone sweeps between Oregon Tech and if they take two, If they take two and Oregon Tech sweeps, Oregon Tech wins it. If so, then Oregon I'm... takes two, then that opens the door for College of Idaho. Oh, God. Wish it was a little less close. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go Eastern Oregon. You're gonna go Eastern. I'll be different. I say after losing uh the series to College of Idaho on senior weekend in Ashland, uh Eastern Oregon's gonna get their bet the best from Southern. I, I think if this was at Eastern Oregon, I'd pick Eastern Oregon. But like I said, senior weekend, they're gonna get hype. Um I think and also, I mean, advantage. For them, the conference tournament would be a little bit closer in Klamath Falls than um, mm -hmm. at Eastern. But yeah, I'll go. I'll, I'll say that they take two or three. But gosh, I don't see. I don't see Oregon Tech sweeping College of Idaho this weekend. So yeah, I'll go Eastern too. I was, about, I was about to say. I don't. I don't. I, I was. I could see Southern Oregon getting it done, but I'd be pretty. I mean, Oregon Tech's got the team, but that'd be pretty messed up to also say. Yeah, Oregon Tech's going to sweep. Let's go talk to the Yotes real quick though. That'd be messed up. I can't do that. Um, so I'll just go, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with it. Um, and then for the Sun Conference, it's basically who's going to win against Coastal Georgia and St. Thomas. You know what? I'm going to ride for Manny. I'm going to ride St. Thomas. Okay. And I'll be different. I'll go for Coastal Georgia. Um, loser owes the other amount, Mountain Dew in Columbus. Okay. Deal. Or Dr. Pepper. Got it. <laughs> All right. Um, it's not enough from us. Great interview, uh, both of us. We loved it. Great one, long, long it was. about thirty-eight minutes. So we're gonna kick it over now. Coach Al Mendiola, Ali Polster, Hattie Haruza from the College of Idaho, the Yotes on NAISB. Y'all check it out. Conference uh, final regular season weekend. Conference tournaments are next week. We're fired up for it. Fired up for this interview. Y'all check it out. Okay, we now welcome on three very, very special guests up at College of Idaho. Three Yotes, Coach Al Mendiola, Hattie Haruza, and Annie Polster. Coach, Hattie, Annie, how we doing? Good day. Great Thanks. day to be a Yote. Absolutely. Always a great day. Thanks for having us on. Of course, of course. Uh, Coach, j just first off, w want to talk about uh, two two young ladies. Been with your program uh, for a few years now. Uh, great careers. But Hattie and Annie, uh, what do they bring to your program on and off the field? Ooh, on and off the field. Well, leadership is a key. Um, and these two young ladies definitely have that. Um, but they're, they're, they're good humans. And um, when we go out and recruit uh, the coaching staff, that's one of the main things that we look for. Um, people are just good humans because when it comes down to it, they're people first, then players, and they're student athletes. And uh, if you look at the all academic teams, they're both always on it. So they take care of uh, business on the field and off the field and in the classroom. Good representation, not for only our program, but for the College of Idaho. Love it. Love it. Got to get, get, get it done in and out. I'll, I'll, I'll say, Decent. I could. I, I graduate uh, tomorrow. Actually, I walk across the stage. But uh, not. On, I was never on a all academic team. I'll say that. Uh, but but we made it. <laughs> I would have to out myself and agree. <laughs> um, but Annie, in the era of the transfer portal, um, especially as of lately, it's been kind of big. You've stayed at COI three years. You got a little bit of bullpen, a couple starts. Um, nowhere near the 120 innings you've tossed so far. What is it about COI that's kept you there for an incredible senior year? 
That is so hard to pinpoint one answer, honestly. Um, I have three for you. Um, the academics here are amazing. That's what drew me here in the first place. Um, and then obviously um, the team is great, is awesome. Um, we've got great coaching and we've got great players on the team. Um, they just really feel like family. And then even beyond, um, beyond the team, I've just made so many connections here with professors and other students that it's hard to, it's hard to say goodbye to this place. And it's sad to think that that's coming up so soon. Um, and so it's what brought me here. It's what kept me here and it's what's going to keep me missing here. So that's my, that's my answer for that. <laughs> <laughs> Annie, answer, uh, answer. it's a great, great answer. A academics, like I said, I, Carly, we were. We were student athletes, but they 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 were really <laughs> student athletes. They put the emphasis on student. Yeah, good job, good job, great great stuff, great stuff. <laughs> there, uh, there, there, Coach Al. <laughs> but uh, uh, Annie, Caitlin, Wilford, uh, and Hannah uh, McNerney, they saw the majority of the, of the action um, the, the last few seasons. They had some great careers. What was it about uh, those two that made them so lethal in the circle? And can you tell a little bit about tell us a little bit about the relationship and the uh, Yote staff? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, I was asked about this my freshman year, and I just couldn't stop talking about it. Um, I've never been on a team before where the pitching staff has been so supportive of each other um, and just wanted the success for each other. And that's continued even this year um, with our other four pitchers and I. Um, we, you know, they were very successful because they had um, they had the spin, they had the speed, and they just really worked hard in the bullpen. And they were great role models for me. Um, working every single day at practice. They pushed me to be better, to grind, to keep grinding it out. And now we've had Hannah back coaching, helping us out. And that's just been awesome because she's just got so much advice on the mental side of the game and obviously the physical aspects too. So I think just having great role models and great people to like lift me up and continue to lift me up. I mean, they still make it out to all the home games when they can and watch online. So um, just having that support system and just having people to like help tweak and watch you, you know, have a second pair of eyes. It's just been amazing. So, um, yeah, they're awesome. It's a little bit weird saying coach Hannah nowadays. I love it. I mean, it's a little different, the relationship for sure, but we love her. We love that she's still out there. Every day. I, think, I think she's more uncomfortable having us say coach Hannah. <laughs> <She does. laughs> yeah. We give her a hard time. She just turned, what, 24, 24 uh, Saturday. Mm -hmm. And she keeps saying she's old, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, that's four in adult years. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hattie, you kind of made your name known nationally in 2021. In the postseason, you went two for three versus Freed Hardeman, scored the winning run, booked yourself a trip to Columbus. You went three for three with two home runs against Southern Oregon. I mean, take us through that postseason run and kind of the emotional roller coaster the 2020 season was for y'all. Well, man, it was so fun. I mean, I didn't really get my freshman year because of COVID. So that was really like my first full year with the team. Um, and I was one of the younger girls. So, I mean, I had a lot of growing to do. But, um, I mean, going up to, we were in Missouri, correct, for our regional? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when we were in Missouri, we we had all the craziness where we had to play like four games mm -hmm. in 24 hours. So, I mean, that kind of started the postseason run where we were just like, all right, we got to kind of kickstart it. Um, but it was a lot of fun just being with girls um, that made softball that fun and everyone was so competitive. Um, I didn't really feel the pressure to have to perform just because I had so many older girls kind of guiding me through that. But it's it's still probably my favorite memory. Um, being here for five years, that's probably my favorite, my favorite time, especially on this team, uh, especially going to Georgia. We just had so much fun and we were playing well and everybody just had each other's back. So, I mean... It was super emotional, but that's kind of what we strive to get towards every year. So it was a lot of fun. Hattie, you mentioned uh, some of the older girls at, at the at the time kind of picked you up, lifted you in the, those big situations. I'm just interested from, you know, obviously a huge fan now of NAI softball, but at that time it wasn't uh, really uh, part, part of my day-to-day -to, -day to keep up with what's going on uh, across the country. Uh, to yeah. Talk to us about uh, some of those players that kind of showed you, showed you the ropes early on. Well, I mean, my freshman year in the outfield, it was uh, me, Micah Fortune, and then um, Aaliyah Mendiola. And Aaliyah was really a leader for me. Um, she took me under her wing the first year I was here, and especially the second. Um, we had just had we had so many girls on the team that really wanted to win. I mean, Lacey Miller, I can't think of, like, more girls on that team that really just all they wanted to do was win. And it really showed with the way they played. Um, Sydney Zachary, our catcher, still, she she started as a freshman, and she's still so just as competitive. 
Um, but probably for me, it was mostly Aaliyah. Um, just even on and off the field, she was a mentor for me 24-7. So it was really comforting to have her there with me. And she just pushed me to be my best on the field and off the field. So. Yeah, kind of part of my off-season homework plan, so we're not uh, putting out many episodes. I kind of want to go back and look in a re recent years, kind of like season players, just to just, uh, boost the NAI uh, softball I I IQ a little bit, and maybe you can help, help me out uh, a little bit with this next question, Hattie, but Cascade always produces some um, top teams um, in uh, NAI year in and year out. What do you think makes the conference so elite, and who are some of the uh, opponents you've, you've gone up against you've really enjoyed competing with? Yeah. Um, I think there's so many teams in our conference that have great coaching. I mean, uh, us, OIT, SOU, EOU, I mean, they we, they all have good coaching and they recruit really well. Um, I think the NAI is kind of looked over, I, you know, when it comes to like bigger divisions and stuff, but we have some of the best coaching, I think, in this division, um, especially like playing against OIT and SOU. They've always been like the top dogs that we played against. Um, I love playing against OIT. It's always competitive. It's always going to be a good game. And they're just, they're also really great people. Like their coaching staff, they're good people. And all the girls, like I'm friends with some of the girls on that team, just by playing against them the last five years. So I think it's really fun to play against teams like OIT and SOU. And I think coaching's probably the biggest, the biggest factor in the success of NAIA. Yeah, come on here. Uh, said multiple times, I love the rivalries in, in the Cascade. I mean, yeah, they're obviously must watch NAI softball, but you tell that there's good, genuine, just you know, they're they're, they're rival they're rivalries, but it's clean, it's yeah. clean, old fashioned, good good rivalries. Um, coach, was talk, talk about uh, coming off a big series win all over one of those rivals. Uh, just took three or four against uh, Southern Oregon. Uh, you are playing your best softball of the season at the right time, uh, 19 and four in Cascade play. How do you continue to build on this momentum as we head into the final week and then in, into postseason softball? Well, I think, you know, just repetitions and trying to uh, have the, the players and the coaches at state level. Um, we don't want to make every game like it's a big game. We want to be taking one pitch at a time. You know, we don't want to put any more stress on the athletes um, than they probably already do on themselves. And so not making it any bigger of a game than just playing the game of softball, um, I think has been um, been one of the things we've mainly focused on. Um, repetitions, um, we're not, you know, the coaching pretty much is over. Um, you know, we're not putting in new things, but we are working on things that we struggle with, you know, over the weekend, like, you know, Tuesday, we'll go over some things, and then we'll enter squad, have Andy throw live against our hitters. Um, it becomes a routine with different things that we need to, to focus on. It could be, you know, hey, you know, this situation, this is where you we could have been or we could have done, um, and then we make the necessary adjustments. OIT is a completely different team than Southern Oregon, so our preparation is going to be more towards, um, you know, uh, uh, how they run first and thirds, how they do their offensive, you know, uh, their concepts. Where Southern Oregon, it was prepare for fast bunting, prepare for fast athletes, prepare for, you know, so that preparation's done. Now we got to go in tomorrow and prepare for OIT, knowing, and the greatest thing about our conference is we know what we're getting out of OIT. We know what we're getting out of Southern Oregon. That is every pitch, if you take one pitch off, could cost you. Um, you know, uh, I say to the players all the time, it's the small things that mean nothing until it costs you something. And that is missing a backup or miscommunication or misplaying a ball, you know, because of the communication. Those are the things that in good games, that one mistake or that one big hit can either hurt you or uh, get you to that point where you win. So it's all preparation now and repetitions. But to just stay stay grounded and don't make any any game any bigger than it is. It's just a softball game. Right. Speaking on Oregon Tech, I mean, you guys have a really big series coming up against them to determine the regular season hmm. champs. Um, can you touch a little bit uh, about the rivalry rivalry between y'all's programs? You know, I Greg has been in the conference a year longer than I have. So I've been here 19. Greg's been here 20. And every year, a series is crazy. I mean, it's a grind. And I think one of the main reasons is because we both know our programs. We both know we have pitching. We both know we can hit. And we both can play defense. And so, once again, it goes back to, if you look at, let's say, the last three or four years, you know, the saying is, 
you know, we're always the bridesmaid, never the bride. We played them in the last three years in the conference championship tournament, and we've lost in nine innings and in 10 innings and in 14 innings on one mistake. Um, and it's not a routine mistake. It's just a, a fortuitous bounce or whatever it is that, you know, or a play that maybe got away from us. Mm. That's how our games have been every year, year in and year out. It's the who, you know, Caleb Mick got the big hit. Hey, let Haley Lawford dove for that one play, kept the run from scoring. Hattie Haruza robs a hit, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, bases loaded. Katie Wilford gets a double play ground ball to get out of an inning. It was a grind. I mean, I, you know, I tell the players, if you're not mentally and physically tired after these games, man, you missed a good game. Yeah. Um, but, you know, year in and year out, we kind of recruit the same players. And the thing is, they're all Northwest kids. Some maybe from Arizona, California, but we're starting to keep the Northwest kids in the Northwest. Um, it used to be they would go to William Penn and, you know, and, and the Iowa's and the Kansas and all stuff. But once again, like Hattie said, the NEI is starting to become recognized so much more around this area that kids are starting to stay. Um, I'm getting I'm getting less Idaho kids, but I'm getting more Northwest kids, and that's what's helping us out. Washington and Oregon, California. So the Oregon Tech uh, series, um, I expect nothing but fireworks. Just like I expected it with Southern Oregon at home. Um, they're good at home. Oregon Tech is always good at home. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, I think we have just as good of a chance of beating them. Um, but it's going to be a grind. They're good. And experience, too. That's another thing, too. Um, we have experience, but they have a whole lineup of experience. So it's going to be a grind. That- I can't wait to watch these games. I cannot wait to watch. watch, watch I, you know, games. I hope we don't disappoint because no. the Eastern Oregon series, the Southern Oregon series that we've had, they're yeah. a great game. Oh, I, the Southern the Southern Oregon games, I missed a couple of those just with uh, working, uh, broadcasting the, the Weber games, but I watched the sure. the Eastern uh, Oregon games. Andy, uh, Andy, we're gonna get get to get get back <laughs> that one, but but that uh, the 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 one with um with you and Hoskins, oh my God. Uh, and and I, like that, like pitch as as as, I, as I've said on here, pitching's what kind of really drew me into softball early on. So that game, I'm just just sitting there locked. I had a couple of couple of my uh, friends on the baseball team. There are pitchers too, and they, we were just sitting there, n- no broadcast, nothing, just looking looking at the screen. Just yeah, <laughs> this is awesome. This rocks. Um, Andy and Hattie not only has the Yoke program been successful in your time there. But, I mean, there's been previous programs that have won conferences and national titles. What's been some of the most fun games you guys have gotten to experience as a student there? Um, well, there's a couple. I mean, the I can't remember who football I was playing when they won on the Hail Mary this year. Western, Western, Montana, Western. Montana Western. That was really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple of us are ball girls, so we're right on the field. Um, so get to experience, like, that kind of stuff is super fun. But um, – for me, especially basketball, I love going to all the basketball games, yeah. and they've they've had some good games. So, I mean, the environment mm-hmm. just around all sports at CFI is so fun just because it's such a community-based school. So, I would just say some of those games are probably some of my best memories, at least being here. Yeah, I think uh, we all sat and watched the, uh, the boys' basketball um, last year when they won the national championship. Uh, we were at Hattie's house, and so I want to say that that was one of my favorite memories, just sitting and watching them win, and it just felt like, just felt like a, a win for us, even though you're not even there. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, y'all, y'all's football team uh, was incredible. I got to see them down in the semifinal uh, when they played Kaiser just down the road in West Palm Beach. I was at that game uh, do, doing coverage for that one, and uh, what a game. A uh, heck of a game uh, went, went Kaiser's way there, there at the end with the uh, uh, – no PI call. I'm sure there, there's still <laughs> folks up up in Caldwell not too happy about that one, but I don't know. Uh, um, the, is what is it tough one? It's, it, it it was a tough one. I I'll, I'll say that. But uh, Annie, uh, g- going back to what we uh were, ju- were just kind of alluding to, uh, you're coming off a two hit complete game, uh, shut out in a one nothing game, uh, where Katie Machado for Southern Oregon threw a great game as well. Earlier this season, you had that crazy pitchers duel um, with Hoskins uh, of Eastern Oregon. Can you just kind of, kind of explain to us the what it's like to compete in, in the Cascade Conference? Uh, probably the hardest job of anybody in an AI softball, which is being a pitcher in the Cascade Conference. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. Um, it's it's a grind, I will say. It's a grind. I mean, we have 
we have a lot of good pitching and a lot of good bats in the in the conference, our team included. And so I think that's that that's been the main thing getting prepared for these games is like Al said earlier, like just going in during the week, you know, and throwing live to our hitters because we have plenty of our own good hitters that um, prepare me, I think, really well for the weeks that we play um, these teams. And um, it just prepares me really well. But I would say. Um, you know, a lot of respect to um, Machado and uh, like Hoskins and Parsons from Eastern. Like, there's some really great pitchers, and um, you know, I learn a lot from just watching them throw and how they throw their sequences too. And um, I think that also, you know, I have to give my shout out to Miss Hallie Holland. That's my catcher. Um, you know, she prepares me really well throughout the week, um, just helping me tell me how my spin's looking. You know, we talk strategy during the game. Um, decide how we want to throw to certain hitters, um, kind of look at their swings, see what their strengths and weaknesses might be. But it's a tough job, I will say. Um, but I think that just the amount of hands on deck, you know, um, Al's looking at swings all the time. Um, Hallie's thinking when Hannah's there, it's just even better because we're sitting and talking strategy. Because, you know, she threw to these people in the years past too. So right. um, there's always something to learn and always somewhere to improve. So I think that just keep learning, keep watching swings and going out there and, you know, competing, but, you know, got to give the respect to all the other pitchers in the conference. I mean, they're throwing well too. And so it's awesome. It always makes it fun. Um, the Southern game was for sure. One of the highlights, I think of my career, one of them, um, it was, it was very fun. It was a very fun game. It was awesome that we could pull out that win. Oh yeah. That, that was great. That, that was yeah. one of the games I, I missed because I was in the booth for Weber. And when I, I was just, just kept re refreshing uh, on the college of Idaho uh, at yeah. uh, Twitter. And I was like, Holy crap. And I just take, I texted uh, coach Al after, and I, I was just like, Andy Polster ace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what, what's the plans post-college uh, last year of softball for uh, both of you, correct? Yeah. What's the plans post-college and what are you graduating with? Um, I graduated last year with a degree in business. Nice. Uh, I mean, this year I'm in the sports administration program. So I'm just going to pursue a career in um, operations, sticking in athletics, but doing a lot of operations and management. Love it. Love it. Yeah. A lot, lot of, lot of great stuff. Uh, Weber's got a great uh, program for that. There's a lot of great op opportunities. It, it just like all the like little jobs in sports um, and, and, and everything like you don't think about on the day, day to day. Um, like like uh, just a couple of years ago, I didn't, I didn't know what a sports information director was or what they did or anything like that, <laughs> but uh, just le learn a little stuff like that. Annie, uh, what, what about you? Yeah, I uh, graduate in a few weeks here. Um, I am getting my degree in exercise science and psychology. Nice. Um, I'm going to take a gap year, um, travel, see the world a little bit. Um, I've saved up some money, so that should be really fun. I'm excited to see where that takes me. And then um, after that, I'll be applying to grad schools. Um, I've just found I just love sports and I, I love the psychology behind it. And so and I go to grad school for psychology um, and hopefully pursue a career in either counseling or um, sports psychology. But yeah. Got any destinations picked out yet? <laughs> I do not. For travel? Yes. Actually, I do. Okay, I lied. Okay. Um, I, I, have a, uh, I have a concert planned. Um, I'm going to see <laughs> Taylor Swift in uh, Germany. I am a, wow. I was a hater, but I'm going to go see uh, I'm going to go see her. <laughs> um in germany in july and so wow. get over there and then from there kind of want to just buy a one-way ticket and see where it takes me but we'll see <laughs> that's awesome that sounds are like you, so fun are you going alone or you got people you're going with um that's kind of up in the air still i have a twin sister so um potentially she might come with me um at least for part of the trip but uh we'll see about that all right coach al are you a confirmed not a swifty <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you know, and, and it's, 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 I mean, whatever. <laughs> he likes to give you props, You know, I, I, I got to give you, you know, Hattie some props because she never, she never talks about herself, you know, too much, but she worked for the Idaho Potato Bowl as, um, in the operations. So she has experience. One of our old, uh, our ex assistant athletic directors, works for ESPN and she's in she's is she in charge of it or the director of it or what was the, the executive director of the Idaho Pitta Bowl. So she hired Hattie. Um wow. and uh so she's got some on field experience. She's got she's gonna do well. Hopefully we can keep her here, but 
Heck yeah, that's yeah. awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll already make it. It's all about connections, networking, connections, and it is. Oh, boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. Absolutely. And that's one thing that is, you know, this school's been here since 1891. So you and I were just, what, five, six? And um, it, you know, so many, you meet so many people that know the college or what, attended the college, and all of a sudden now you're working for them or you know somebody that they knew that now you're working for them. It's crazy. The networking. Um, I have so many friends that have graduated here that I was frat brothers with, or baseball teammates with, or just friends on the campus, and now they're doctors and dentists or orthodontists and stuff like that. And you won't believe how many times that they've told me, "If your player has something going on with their teeth on a Saturday, and we're not open, call me, I'll fix them." And I'm like, <laughs> "Okay, well, we were at the rodeo, and I'm sure you've had a lot of beers, but I will remember that." <laughs> <laughs> so no it's it's a good deal there's so many people so many good humans uh that have attended the college or is here at the college it's a special place man yeah yeah awesome um how do you a little bit non-sports related i mean in consideration of college of idaho you know what's what's some fun things to do on campus or just in the city of caldwell <laughs> Um, well, I grew up here, so I have a lot of friends that are still kind of in the area and being with my family, a lot of my family still here. Um, but being on campus, it's just really being together. So I'm always with some of my teammates or we make friends with um, other sports. A lot of us are like connected in that way. So just being with everybody is really fun. Um, during the summer, kind of how Al just talked about it with the rodeo. Um, a lot of our girls come to school early just to go to the rodeo for the week because um, it's it really a lot big? of fun. Yeah, CNR is huge. Mm -hmm. Called the night rodeo. Uh, and you know what? The yeah. only thing you would have to do is pay your way here. I have two SC hoods. You Coach, you, uh, you move a little bit, co coach, you move a little bit uh, closer. We can't hear you. What, what, what was that again, Coach? It said, you just find your way to Idaho. We'll get you to the rodeo. You have no worry about where to stay. You get, I mean, we will take care of you. That's what we're about. The rodeo is an experience you have to experience. <laughs> yeah, I might. Carly, I mean, I, I just think thinking on our side, that'd be some great content. I think that, that could be some great content for our YouTube. I'm gonna channel. get Reagan on the bowl <laughs> for sure. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay, okay. <laughs> we need free steakhouse. I don't know. I'll, maybe mechanical bowl. I, I don't. I, I maybe. Maybe we'll see. We'll see. We'll, 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 we'll let, let's, uh, I tell you what, if we can get, if we'll, we'll talk about it all fair, I don't want to make any promises on, on there right now. Maybe. Uh, Maybe you guys need to come to Idaho. I mean, it's unbelievable. You can go whitewater rafting. Yeah. There's so many things that the state can offer you guys. And hey, we know people. Uh, Y'all take care, take care of business against, uh, Oregon Tech. I'll be heading up there. Yeah. I tell you, that is that's something I really like about the Cascade. Regular season champ hosts a conference tournament. Get yep. I get like logistics can't work with, with every conference or whatever, but I think that that adds a lot of value. I mean, it, it's it's making this weekend massive. Yeah. Yeah, I spoke to Greg this morning and he goes, um, you know, when we talked when we were both in California playing uh Jessup from them, he goes, you know, who would have thought that you'd be, is that like no Sudamas, whatever his name, but whatever that is, because I told him this weekend was going to be the weekend that declares a regular season champion. And then he called me this morning. He goes, who would have thought when you told me that in February that I would believe it, but here we are. Well, coach, uh, we, we talked a little bit earlier or, or uh, Hattie and Andy did about uh, the other sports getting like football and basketball uh, and everything. And right now the Yotes are sitting six in the NAI uh, director's cup race usually uh up there in the race for it. what do you think the reason is for uh this tremendous success it has to start from leadership um our athletic director athletic director regan rossi um is an unbelievable leader um she she allows us to coach she allows us to do because she knows we're going to do things right but she always has us involved with the department itself um she has one-on-ones every month with every coach um, just to see how we're doing, if there's anything we need from her or any questions. She is constantly, you know, she says when, she says basketball is her favorite sport, which I don't doubt because she used to be our women's basketball coach before she was AD. 
but she has not missed a softball game mm -hmm. since she's been since she's been employed here at the college. Even as a women's basketball coach, she can. Wow. Um, so the one thing that she does really well that um, I mean, I don't know if all ADs do this, but she's at every event, women and the men's soccer. Um, she's involved. She knows every student athlete, first and last name. Um, I'd be willing to bet she knows their major uh, or what year they are, but she is so involved in the athletic department. She advocates for the athletics, athletic department. Um, but more importantly, she knows that we recruit good people and we do our jobs and we do it the right way. Um, and so by doing that, she allows us to coach. We get the right people in the programs and, um, you know, tweak a couple of things here and there and then we're off, you know. And most importantly, you know, the Yokes, we don't like to lose. <laughs> I wish I would have uh, made time to get to speak to her. I got I saw her briefly uh, down here uh, or down at West Palm Beach uh, yeah. when when the football team was down. But I just saw her, didn't get a chance to speak to her or anything. I wish I would have because, I mean, like hats off to her. It's a great athletic department, uh, great great stuff uh, there in Caldwell for sure. Yeah. She, she's doing so much, and she's involved in yep. the city of Caldwell a lot too. She's, uh, you know. I, I wish she would take some time off as far as being in all these boards, but she wants a college and she wants the community to know how special this college is, especially the department. And so she's involved in so many boards um, that it's, it, I know it just, it has to wear on her, but man, she's, she's got grit. She's just, yeah. she just gets it done. And, and there's, it's so special. I mean, uh, she's, she's big for us. Love it. Love hearing that coach. Yeah. Uh, Coach, you're a graduate from College of Idaho, a former great baseball player. Your wife, Liz, she coaches the volleyball team. Um, she's had a phenomenal career on the court for the Oats. What does being a Yote mean to you and your family? Hmm. Wow. Well, you do know that I have two. My daughter graduated here and played for me for four years, and my son's a freshman on the men's basketball team. So what does a Yote mean to us? Um <laughs> Earlier, I said I bleed purple. We all bleed purple. Um, this college has meant so much to us because of the family uh, and the community that uh, has been around since we were student athletes and until this very day. Um, no one is more important than anybody else on campus. Um, no one thinks, you no, know, there's no entitlement. There's no title. You know, it's everything is, is led by example, everything is, um, is led in a family environment, everybody says hello. It's an unbelievable campus. Um, when we, when I was a student athlete here, I was, I mean, approached by so many great people. And, um, you know, I'm trying to pay it forward and give everybody that I can the experience that I was given and the opportunity that I was given when I, when I attended the College of Idaho, because to me, it's a special place. Um, I wouldn't go anywhere else. I mean, I've been here 19 years as a softball coach, 30 years, if you want to count student athlete and assistant baseball coach, my wife in here, my wife has been here just as long. Mm -hmm. um, we just love this place. Um, there, I just don't think there's any place that we would be able to go to that would be as special as this. And once you leave it, it you know, it's hard to come back with someone else takes it and then they see how special it is. And they won't leave. <laughs> and so um, I just don't see myself leaving this place until I retire. And my wife's the same. My daughter, you know, she could have gone to another school, um, but she ended up coming here and, and now she's an academic advisor um, for the um, academic department. My son's a freshman and, in, in, you know, and uh, playing on the men's basketball team. So we got the experience, um, Kansas City. He wanted to go elsewhere because he didn't want to be where mom, dad, and sister was. <laughs> and now he's majoring in business and he just fell in love with the department. Mm -hmm. uh, and so now he's here. So. It means more to our family. Um, this college means so much to our family because of what they gave us and the opportunities that we were given while we were here and, and meeting the special people that we wanted to give our kids that same opportunity. And anyone that we coach, we want to give them that same opportunity because they're also family as well. Coach, you mentioned there is some names in there early on that uh, I've helped you out. Could you mention one of them or maybe just a piece of advice uh, that you uh, re received uh, 25, 30 year years ago that uh, still uh, stands with you today? Yeah, Sean Humberger, our baseball coach. Um, you know, not everybody knows the Sean Humberger that I know because that was 91, 92. I model 
his program and the expectations and the standards. Um, you know, we do everything on our own. We don't ask people to work on our field. We don't ask people to pick the weeds. We don't ask people. We do things because that's the standard of our program. We don't want to rely on other people. And then, you know, because then it, there becomes laziness, you know, and, and, a, and a disappreciation for what you have. When you work on something and you have this, the standard of excellence and, the, and, and discipline, you appreciate what you have. And I think these girls uh, will be great examples of what we have, um, you know, good people. But Sean Humberger is one that I would say was a huge um, mentor of mine because not only did he teach me how to uh, coach the game, be a, be a leader, but um, he was also just a good person. And off the field, you talk to him and he would do anything for you, um, do anything for our program. Um, and that's kind of how I feel the relationship has been still to this very day. I still talk to him. He's right next to me, and I'll go in and ask him a question. He'll come up to me and ask me a question. And I'm sitting there just at all going, you're asking me a question, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then I would say maybe Marty Holly for giving me the opportunity to, to coach softball. He approached Sean Humberger, and Sean Humberger gave him – gave I mean, he, he gave me a huge recommendation. Um, and so then they pursued me, um, taking over the program, offered me the job, and, you know, 19 years later, here I am. So Sean Humberger, gosh, Marty Holly. I mean, there, I could name a lot of people to the present day, even Jim and, and Doug Everett, our, our co-presidents. They're great people. Um, so I can say a lot. Regan Rossi, when she was a women's basketball coach, you know, yeah. um, we, we we hit it off well. I mean, we go to dinners with each other's families. I'd take care of her babies. She'd take care of my babies. We just had that relationship. And, and now, you know, although she's my supervisor or an AD, um, we have a, a stronger relationship than a working relationship. And, and we still, you know, I, I I can tell when she's serious and I know oh, she's joking, um, but we have that respect that um, just goes a long way. So um, there's a lot of people I just wish I could name them all. Um, I'm sure, Coach. I know, know this. You got me fired up to uh, go up there and ch and check out the campus. I, I think you, uh, I, I'd stay around. You could you could convince me to stay until probably about the first day it snowed up there, and then I'd, I'd be hot tailing it back <laughs> to the sunshine. Uh, you know what? Not that bad when it snows either. Uh, I'm sure it's gorgeous. It's you know, learn, learn how to snowboard. You'll never leave. Uh, I'm, I'm still trying to learn how to play golf, man. I like being able to pl play golf around hey, out here. I've got, I've got connections in golf, too. See, call it about it. We have connections, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, today I broke broke a hundred for the first time ever. I put out a tweet to Live Golf saying we'll start contract negotiations at a hundred thousand a year. But I love haven't it. heard back from them. I love it. Uh, well, uh, Coach Annie uh, Hattie, thank thank y'all so much. It's been phenomenal, phenomenal. Uh, y'all got uh, anything else? Uh, fire away. If not, Carly. Uh, oh, Carly. I got one. That, yeah, absolutely. My apologies. One more. Yeah. Um. Anyone can start. We kind of been asking this, everyone. What is your go-to gas station snack and drink? Yeah, snack and drink, your go-to. I feel passionately about this. I love a good crispy Diet Coke. I love a Diet Coke. So that is probably my favorite. Um, and then for a snack, um, probably a Reese's Minis because it has the right ratio of mm. chocolate to peanut butter. The big ones don't have the same ratio. Solid. <laughs> are you are you fountain or bottle or do you not care? I prefer ooh bottle or can is the question too. Oh, okay. Okay, not oh, fountain. No, no, no. Fountain's dead last. Fountain's dead last. Um, okay. Yeah, I know. I think I think can bottle fountain. Okay. Mm. Some yeah. people are really picky about that. <laughs> they don't. They don't have the glass Coke bottles up there. Do, uh, much. Oh yeah, yeah. Y'all do. Okay. I, I about yeah. classic Coca Cola out of out of uh, uh, a glass. That's the go to. But yeah. I agree with the yeah. rest of you. The rest of the rest of your standings. A, a okay. That's fair. I don't think of that one first. But you're right. Good point. <laughs> great take on the Reese's Minis, by the way. Thank you. Great <laughs> job. <laughs> Definitely. Hot tamales. Ooh. Have you heard of a chico stick or a chico stick? Uh -uh. What is it? It's a coconut. It's like a it's like a um butterfinger, a, a butterfinger but with coconut. Mm. It's a, called a chico stick. Go try it. And then I don't drink soda, so I'm either a Powerade 
Uh, purple Powerade, right? Purple or orange. Purple or orange. Great. Good. Um, or water. Solid. <laughs> yeah, I believe purple. Solid. Not a huge coconut guy, but I can respect it. Yeah. So, but hot tamales for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's a great one. That's a great one. Hattie. Um, fountain. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> I think fountain Dr. Pepper and yeah. probably Chico Sticks. Okay. I don't like bottled soda, so that's I think, yeah, we'll have to agree to disagree on that one. <laughs> I, I, I think it will survive. I, I, I think I think y'all know each other long enough. Y'all can survive. Uh, the, 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 we'll fight about it later. <laughs> uh, well, um, again, uh, thank y'all so much. If the, uh, anything else, y'all good to go? No, we just like I said, greatly appreciate you having us. You're yeah. doing sure. unbelievable things for NAI softball, and uh, you know whatever we can do to continue to get you guys to do this. I mean, I'll do a shout out anywhere and everywhere uh, yeah. to promote you guys because it's awesome. Appreciate it. Um, everybody listening, subscribe yeah, yeah. to the YouTube. Um, and yeah, we, we're blessed. We're blessed. We love doing this. A lot of great plans for the future of NAISB and continue to grow in uh, the game, the league. I uh, Yeah, we're locked in. Um, not not going anywhere, graduating, but uh, I th th think I know. Well, we're we're, we're going to keep doing this. Somehow, even though uh, it, it, I am coming back for my master's at Weber, so I don't know how I got suckered in for more school, but uh, I also <laughs> – I'll still be, uh, I'll, I'll still be around, still be around GA and uh, they're uh, working, working with the, the football team. And yeah, uh, when it comes springtime, it's softball. Sweet. Well, thank well, you so much. Thank you. Make sure you get us the information so these two yahoos can get all the yoke gear and send it out. Just send it to the <laughs> yoke softball account. Yeah. yeah. Will do. We'll send it over. And again, thank you all so much. Good luck Thanks. against Oregon Tech. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Pleasure, yeah. you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Go, yeah. Go, yeah. Go, yeah. <laughs>